guys, so what's up everybody, this is Ruben Garcia and this is a beautiful day and today on the Proven by Ruben podcast we have Jordan Clark. What's up brother, how my are man, you? My man, my man, thank you, been waiting a long time for this. I know, we we yeah. uh, we definitely went back and forth to try to hammer this in, yeah. schedules and calendars were a little bit like this. Well, I'm si- excited we finally got together today, this is going to be great. Yeah man, yeah man, so if you could tell everyone who you are, what you do, how you do it. And all that good jazz. Sure, man. Uh, great. So my name is Jordan Clark, and uh, I'm the team leader for the Clark Team Real Estate Group. We operate our business under the umbrella of Keller Williams what? here in the Raleigh market, and right. uh, we serve the entire triangle. That's awesome. Yeah. So my, my primary function with the team is the lead listing specialist and then uh, coaching and developing our team members across the board. Awesome. Glad that you went there because we're going to get a little bit of context. So um, what did 2000, what year are we in? 19. What did 2018 look like for your business? Yeah, 2018 uh, was a banner year for us. Uh, we ended up the year with 137 units for $35 million in sales. Woo. Yep. So awesome, awesome year for us. Yeah. And we're looking forward to continuing to break records this year. So that was a record breaking year? It, it was. Yeah. I so love that. We're, uh, we're fortunate enough to have had growth in our business ever since year one. Yeah. Every year. So really? Yeah. Do you know the percentage of growth? Uh, last year we experienced 40% growth. What? Yeah. 40, Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. 40% growth. So, uh, the previous year's units were 102 and we jumped to 137 last right. year and even larger growth in, in the volume. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Very cool. So well, how many people do you currently have on your team to support that? Sure. So uh, we've done some pretty aggressive hiring over the last 90 days. So currently um, we're at 10 team members, including myself. Okay. Uh, the breakdown on that is three full-time administrators. Right. Uh, we've got an inside sales guy in David and then uh, four buyer's agents uh, that are on the team. And we okay. actually just brought in an outside sales agent that's also going to be doing some productivity coaching uh, for, our, really? for our newer agents. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, and I want to go there with the inside and outside uh, sure. sales associates. Uh, before that, where did, for you, yep. where did this all start, this whole real estate idea sure. in the world? Sure, absolutely. You know, I got to give a lot of credit to my older brother, uh, Brandon. So my whole, my whole shout fam- out to Brandon. Yeah, my, yeah. So my older Brandon, uh, brother Brandon, he uh, he lives up in uh, Pennsylvania, where I was where I was raised, and um, he's been in real estate now for about twelve years. <laughs> and um, I was living out in Las Vegas, you know, trying to find myself and figure out what I wanted to do when I grew up. And after about three, three and a half years out there, uh, my older brother had given me a phone call and he said, look, man, he said, I understand you're out there. You're having fun. Seems like you're making good money. But in a blink of an eye, you know, I don't want you to turn into that 40 year old server. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I just right. believe that God had more planned for your life and you've got more potential than that. And uh, he said, why don't you move back to Raleigh? get your real estate license. My, my parents live here. So that was a natural place for me to go. And, um, and he said, I'll coach you, I'll coach you through it and make sure that you're successful. And, you know, his phone call was just very timely. Like it was definitely a God thing that I was like in a moment where I was ready to accept that call. Yeah. And I said, great, let's do it. And he said, are you serious? And I said, yeah, he literally like flew on a plane the next day and like helped me pack up my car. And, uh, like we drove across the country together and, um, the, the rest is kind of history. I moved back to Raleigh um, and started working on my real estate license, and uh, here we are today, seven, six years later. Wow. Yep. So there's so many stories in that. You know, one, you know, I always hear this thing where it's, if you're thinking about someone, call them, because that might be the call that they need. Absolutely. Right? That's like the universe talking to us, and the energy Shh. saying, call them. The breadcrumbs. Yeah, yeah. right. So it's pretty yeah. cool that he did that. Yep. Um, and I also want to ask... Or I also want to say is that, you know, some people are like, why do these successful people want to help others that don't have it? What's the win for them? And I think one of the things that we see commonly is that as long as you, the person that needs the help, is willing to help themselves, anybody that is successful will come down and help you because it becomes more of a win-win relationship. And he proved it by jumping on a plane the next day. Abs- abs- absolutely. I mean, there's an there's an element of family there, but right. having you know brought some people into my environment, I didn't realize the satisfaction and joy that I would get from like watching somebody come into our world, yeah, and then their life you know grow and then put themselves in a better position. Exactly. And I found that to be 
very rewarding for myself personally. Right. So I think that there was an element of that going on for him as well. Yeah. Right. That you get satisfaction in helping others achieve their goals and live their best life. Exactly. Yeah. So this is me being super curious. Yeah. What, why? What about? Vegas. Why were you in Vegas? Yeah, sure. So um, I had finished college um, and I was working in Asheville, North Carolina. Um, I had an entry level job at Wells Fargo doing like equity lines, home mortgages and car loans. And uh, quickly found out that while Asheville is a great city, it wasn't the right city for me. Okay. And uh, my best friend from high school always had a dream of working in hotels. And his folks were on the splits, and his dad moved out to Las Vegas with a pile of cash to have a good time. And he said, I'm going to follow my dad and uh, enter into the hotel business. Um, He dropped out of college his first year and is now the hotel manager for the only five-star, five-diamond hotel on the Strip, uh, Wynn, Las Vegas. Whoa. Um, And and with no college education, he's, like, making some serious money and uh, realizing his dreams. So I just went out there with him, you know, because I was just ready for a change. And uh, I wanted to experience uh, life a little right. bit. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Grew yeah. up in a pretty reserved, you know, environment. Went to college in the mountains. So there was, <laughs> yeah, free. yeah, there was only so much trouble that I could get yeah. into. So that was kind of my moment to like let it all out. And uh, by all means, I did that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what stays in Vegas? Yeah. Or what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, right? That's, that's right. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. So you're 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 back here. Yep. You're in Raleigh. He's starting to teach you. Yep. What are some of the challenges that you had as a newer agent trying to figure this whole thing out? Yeah, I, I would I would say the biggest the biggest challenge, you know, starting off is just getting that initial wave of, of momentum rolling right. and figuring out, you know, how you're gonna how you're gonna make it right? Like, there's so many different ways to be successful in this business, and the way that I do it, the way that you do it, the way that anybody else does it. There's so many different models for success, right. and so uh, just figuring out, you know, what was gonna be my space where I was doing something that I was excited about. Right. Right. And so um, I've been coached since day one. Um, I hired a real estate coach out the gate. Couldn't afford to pay her, so I struck a deal with her where I was going to pay her, like, you know, a set referral fee off of, like, every deal that I had for, like, right. my first 10 deals. And yeah. she's like, I've never had anybody request that from me before, but, you know, I think this might work. And, uh, you know, it, it, it worked out well for her. So uh, it worked out well for both of us, I should, I, I yeah. should say. So I've had a real estate coach from day one. At uh, at one point, I had had three coaches at, at once. Um, wow. and, and so I'm a huge proponent of coaching and, like, uh, learning from others that have helped, you know, many other people through the same exact problems. Right. You know, uh, it's a scary decision to, to stroke that check uh, when you don't have the money in the bank account. Yeah. But if you have belief in yourself and you know that you're going to go out and do the work and execute, yeah. um, over time you learn to, to trust yourself and um, invest in yourself more. Yes. Yeah. I couldn't agree with that yeah. more. I couldn't mm-hmm. agree with that more. So for you, I mean, one, the, it, it's pretty cool that the – and this is what I think the the coach saw was that you didn't necessarily had the means to pay her. However, you were very solution based. You, you didn't just say, "Well, we can't make this happen," and walk away. Yeah. You figured out a way. Yeah. What would it take? Right. What would it take? Yeah. And it sounds like that was like a good green light for her because now it shows that you will be solution based through the coaching as well. Sure. And not a victim. Sure. Absence. Yeah, I think ab- absolutely. You know, initially it was you know just learning you know the dialogue, learning the scripts. Learning the psyche of, you know, who was on the other end of the phone. Right. So, you know, I was on like desk duty, you know, just picking like sign calls up, which yeah. I don't even think exists anymore. Yeah. But that, that's how I, uh, you know, cut, cut my teeth in the real estate world, yeah. sitting on desk duty like every day. Yeah. Did you ever find yourself hitting your head against the wall so many times that you told yourself, I'm done in the beginning? Not so much, no, not so much in the beginning. Um, You know, I I had a decent first year. I ended up doing 10 transactions in my first year. And, um, you know, I was was really excited. Oh, yeah. My my full first year in the business, when I first moved back uh, to Raleigh uh, from Vegas, I got a restaurant job. And so I was working in the Mm -hmm. restaurant like five, (laughs) five, uh, five nights per week. Yeah. And then I would take real estate school all day, Saturday and Sunday. And it was like, the two most exhausting months of my life. Right. Uh, and, uh, but I was doing that to make some money. And that's actually how I ended up uh, meeting my wife. She was a bartender at a restaurant next door to that. Crazy. And so I used to go in there for like a beer afterwards. And that's how, how her and I hooked up. So, wow. yeah, so I did that for about, about two months. And so I was working in the restaurant 
and in real estate, like part time on my full first year until mm. I decided like to take that leap of faith. Um, right. And, and that's when I really started to see things take off in my business. Right. It was like the heavens opened up for me yeah. the moment I had that faith to like let go of my like restaurant job where I was making like three or four hundred dollars a week. Right. Um, and the, literally like within a week's time, I had like four deals on contract when I had done t- 10 in the previous right. 12 months. Um, so that's it, uh, a lesson that I've learned over and over again in my life is like the more scary the decision is when you make it, the returns are just huge. And, right. it, and for, for me personally, being a faith based person, I think that that's God uh, rewarding us for our faith mm-hmm. and, and saying, look, when that when there, when it's when it's when it's placed here, how do you think it got there? Right. right. Like the scarier the decision is run towards it. And that's when I've seen like the biggest growth and breakthroughs that I've had in my life is yeah. when the scarier decision, the bigger the breakthrough. Yeah, yep. exactly. Now I've, hi- I've hired a coach myself yeah. and, and he, you know, he hammers that in my head too, right? Because, you know, as, as many times as we don't, we want to believe we have, we don't have limited beliefs, you know, sometimes it does, it, it just trickle in and, and that's, what's great about a coach who remind you that, or he or she will remind you that, Hey, listen, on the other side of that crap, like the one thing, all the five things you told me, that one thing that you Tried avoiding not telling me yeah. the one thing that you're scared of the most. That's what's going to get you to the next step. Yep. You know, it's sometimes we try to avoid it yep. when we have no business trying to avoid it. That needs to be the one thing that we tackle. Absolutely. I used to think I had a, a great mindset until I met my current business coach, and he's he's realized that there's a lot of opportunity left for, <laughs> for me to grow with my mindset. But right. that, that's you know, sign of a great coach. A hundred percent. Somebody that can stretch you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what were some of the, the, knowing that you had that, that feeling in your chest, knowing yeah. that you wanted to jump. Sure. Were there any other factors that said, listen, the time is now? Yeah. I think, um, that my wife and I, you know, had plans to get married and, uh, had plans to have, start having kids. And, right. and so that was like a big thing. I'm like, look, you know, I can't support that off of, you know, a few hundred dollars a week that I was making from the restaurant. And, Ultimately, I was just no longer passionate about that. I was all fired up in real estate. I had a, a great mindset out the gate that I was going to come in and be one of the top producing agents right. in the Triangle area. And I knew that that was going to take a lot of hard work and effort. And um, it, it was I was terrified to make that decision, to let yeah. go of like 1500 bucks a month in, yeah. in, in pay. And so we look back on, on that moment with a, with a lot of gratitude today. Oh, yeah. That's so cool. And yeah. I feel like there's a lot of people who are listening to that. Yeah. And, and are making that much. And, and it's just like, and hearing you and saying, you know, maybe the time's right for me, but they're a little feared. What would you tell that person who's just a little fear to jump from that, that structure to something that's not as structured, but has a banging reward? Yeah. I mean, I know it's a big pill to swallow, um, but I've learned this lesson time and time again, is that you just have to run towards your fear, right? I believe that um, fear uh, comes from the devil. And, and faith comes from God. And I believe that when we have fear in our lives, it's keeping us mm. from reaching our life's destiny. And so when I initially have fear, it, I, I have fear. But then I've trained my brain to recognize that as an opportunity to level up and take my life right. to, to new heights. And so I just, I just run towards it, right? Yeah. I've learned, like, I get excited when I feel fear now. Because that means that I'm, you know, going to have a breakthrough soon. Yes, and, you're about to grow. Yeah, and, and I run through it. And, man, it was, it, it's been a journey to get to that spot. But after you, you keep exercising that muscle, you start to, like, have confidence in God, the universe, yourself, whatever it is, that it makes it uh, a little bit, I don't, I don't want to call it easier, but... I guess easier to yeah. easier to move forward in the face of fear. Yeah. Right. No, but nobody lives life without feeling fear. It's just the difference of is it going to cripple you or are you going to run towards it and, right. and move forward in the face of it? Right. Because yeah. you start looking at it as you start recognizing it as opportunity. Like oh, the door just opened because I'm starting to get a little fear. I'm starting to get a little uncomfortable. The yeah. door is opening. I think the fear is the the devil trying to keep you small and keep you from your from your life's purpose. <laughs> right. Right. And, and then when we make that decision to move forward in the face of fear, it's God rewarding us for our faith. Right. right? Faith or fear, you, ch- right. you choose. Right. Right. So, yeah, I love that. That's my thoughts. That's awesome. Yep. So for you, you were hitting ten deals. Yeah. When did you know 
it was it was right to hire that first per let's do this sure what was your first hire yeah sure so i took a little detour on my road to team building so i started off uh, at caldwell banker dead 10 year, uh, units Same. there my first year my brother was a caldwell banker agent up in pennsylvania yeah so that was like a natural path yeah. for for me to take since he was going to be the one babysitting me right. during those first years um after my first year in the business, I was approached by a good buddy of mine from high school who actually started a professional sales recruiting business. And he was um, recruiting for one of the top teams here in the area. Um, and I had an opportunity to join a 400 unit a year team here in wow. the area, number three in our market at the time, uh, to be a listing specialist. Right. And so um, I took that interview. I had no clue what I was doing there because I had taken like two listings and I was all of a sudden going to be like the right hand man of this top yeah. agent here in our market. And I did that. And that was a really instrumental part of, of my growth in that year that I was th uh, there. I ended up, you know, going on 80 listing appointments, you know, pricing out that many homes, negotiating nearly that many contracts. And, um, most importantly, uh, getting to see the inner workings of a team and not being mm -hmm. like a systems guy by nature, right. seeing the, the inner workings of how all that flowed so I could have a better picture of it in my mind when I did finally make the decision to leave that team right. and join Keller Williams. So I ended up putting up, up about 60 units uh, for, for her business wow. on the listing side. But part of my agreement when I went there is that I would still be able to grow my own kind of personal business under the umbrella of her firm. And of course, I had to give her role priority, which sure. I which I did. But in my in my free time, uh, I was working on my own business and ended up doing um, seventeen units outside of the sixty wow. on my own with like whatever was left in the gas tank. Right. And so ultimately, you know, I wasn't uh, passionate about being in that role long right. long term, and have always had my eyes set on doing my own thing. And uh, you know, the, I guess the the thought process there was if I can do seventeen on fumes in the gas tank. What does that look like when I put all my energy and emotion right. to it? And so uh, my dad uh, was a KW agent at the time and invited me to a training. And, uh, you know, at the time I didn't realize I was being recruited, but I was being recruited. <laughs> and he said, hey, uh, you know, come to this training. And as a thank you to our team leader for getting you a free ticket to it. I've heard this you one know, Yeah, sit down with our team leader and have like a free consultation or <laughs> yeah. something. So uh, I did that and, and, and the rest the rest is history. Right. I joined Keller Williams and, um, and my business just exploded. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So... For you, what was the biggest thing you took away from that 400 unit team? What, because you said you were able to see like the inner workings. Sure. What was the biggest takeaway that you took out of that? Yeah, it was, it was really just the structure of like the different roles in it. Like coming from Cobble Banker, the particular office that I was in, like I was the youngest dude in the office by like 20, 25 years. Right. And so a lot of these people who were solo agents maybe had like an assistant or a part-time assistant, but nobody had buyer's agents. Yeah. Nobody had ISAs, you know, nobody had runners. Right. So to see like the inner workings of the team and like the different roles and, and the duties that they fulfilled and just all the systems and processes that are involved with the servicing that many clients at a high level, that was mm. my, that was my biggest takeaway from it. Um, from a skill perspective to just the amount of repetitions that I was able to get in right. in a short period of time yep. gave me the confidence to go to that listing table and compete, you know, with some of the top brokers in the area. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, because if, because coming from Cobalt Banker too, if you had an admin, you made it. Yeah. You know, like, oh my gosh, they have an admin. Sure. Like, that's huge. Yeah. And to see that, to see the back end of everything that's involved to truly create a business. Yep. I mean, I'm sure you, I sure, I'm sure you learned a ton from that. So you jump from that. Yes. Right. Yep. Hey, Cause you just said, Hey, listen, if I throw all my energy into this, what could I create? Sure. Talk to me about that first year. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it, it was probably, that was probably the, the scariest decision of my life is to leave that team and run out and start, start my own thing. Yeah. And that's a real fear yeah. from a lot of people yeah. that are on teams. A a absolutely. I mean, I was at a point in my life where I was making more money than I'd like twice as much money as I've ever made before in my life. And, you know, for lack of a better term, I was being spoon fed, you know, business. I didn't have to go out there and hustle and find it. It was just, hey, go to this appointment at this day at this time. But ultimately, I just wasn't I wasn't passionate anymore. It was like this really weird spot where I thought I was going to be satisfied and fulfilled because of the money I was making. But I wasn't satisfied with the work I was doing and the environment 
that I was in. Right. And so, um, you know, having to give that up with one baby and then another one on the oh. way, my wife being out of the workforce and, what you, know, she say? you know, us not having a strong, you know, financial foundation because of yeah. my poor life choices in Las Vegas. Um, you know, <laughs> damn you Vegas. Yeah. To, 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 to make that decision was like terrifying. Yeah. Like that was, um, one of the worst times of my life mm. is like being, being stuck uh, between a decision. Um, I, I'm at a loss for the word right now, but like I was just like frozen, like stuck in the middle. Like, I, and I literally, it took me four to six weeks to make that, to make that decision. And like, you know, I wasn't, I was just riding, you know, both sides of it. Um, like, yeah. I, I like, wasn't, I was scared. It really, I was just crippled, crippled by fear. Right. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to give up all this safety and security right. and income because I'm not passionate about what I'm doing or do I just keep going that path because that allows me to provide for my family. And I just, right. I couldn't do it. I've got so much passion and energy. And if I'm not excited about where I'm headed to work, you know, it, it, I'm not, I'm not loving my life. And uh, so I'm super thankful I made that decision because I know a lot of people, you know, would have stayed there and possibly stayed there forever. Exactly. Yeah. So would you say there's another factor to the reason that, I mean, what was that? What was the, because obviously that's a conversation you're having in your head internally, four to six weeks. What was the one thing that kind of popped up and said, you know what, that can't happen or that has to happen? Sure. You know, I think it boils down to just my family and what I envisioned, you know, my family life to look like. Um, you know, there was a lot of structure with the team and I had to be places at certain times, had to like be on phone duty over the weekends and like my family's watching football game and I'm like there waiting for a phone to ring on a, right. on a Sunday and I was just, I was just miserable and I wanted to be with my wife and I wanted to be with my kids. And like, that was the exact reason I got into the, the business is for the flexibility and freedom of, of being my own boss. And I'm very entrepreneurial and while I'm super thankful for that opportunity, right? you know, I, I can't ever see myself going back to a structured uh, environment where I don't get to, you know, outline what my day and what my life looks like. Right. And, and, the, and the, the thing about that is that you'll see a lot of people, they won't necessarily move towards pleasure, but they'll move away from pain. Mm. And that, to me, sounds like it was it was going to pain point of it was. not having that flexibility. And you say, you know what, I'm going to make a decision. It, 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 it was. And, uh, you know, it, it was scary and it required a lot of belief in yourself. Yeah. Right. And, you know, I believe in myself a lot more now that I've made that decision and came out through the other side of it. Yeah. But, um, I was just at a, at a standstill and, uh, very indecisive and like, man, that was a very powerful lesson in my life and like running towards your fear yeah. and, and pro probably the scariest decision that I've made in my life and also came with the highest reward. Right. So uh, yeah. you know, fast forward to my first year at Keller Williams, yeah, I plugged in, uh, you know, I was like, okay, I'm going to do this, right? So, like, you know, a light switch went off, and I became, like, the world's most serious businessman. <laughs> and, like, I was in, like, a suit every day, like, waking up super early, yeah. going out there, executing, door knocking, handing out expired folders. I was just getting it, man. Like, I was, I went to all the trainings in the office, regionally, nationally, and I just came back and, back and executed because, you know, my family's livelihood – Dependent on it. Like, right. It was like literally like a burn the boats situation. Yeah. Like, we had zero money in the bank account and um, we were working on like paying off credit card debt and things like that in my first year uh, on the team where I started to make money. And um, it was literally like this is make or break, right? Mm. It's like move back in with your parents or be successful. Yeah. And uh, I found that I perform very well in those situations. Although I feel the stressor right. and feel the pre uh, you know uh, pressure and stress from that, um, you know I've learned over the years to have have faith in myself and mm -hmm. um, you know make those scary decisions um, because I believe it's what God wants for me. Yeah, yeah. and 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 in a, in a way, do you think that it squeezes the time for growth? Right, it's it's forced growth instead yeah. of staying comfortable. It's this slow trajectory of growth. Yeah, when you build it, when you put that pressure on you, it is grow in this amount of time versus this amount of time. Sure. So you squeeze, you, like you said, you get more reps in, in a, in a, in a, uh, a small amount of time. Sure. A absolutely. Um, you know, I've, I'm thankful to have experienced, you know, growth each year that I've been in the business. Yeah. And like, I can't imagine that not being the case. Like I'm going to be won't. a hot mess if that were to ever be the case. Like I'll do everything in my power to yeah. ensure that that doesn't happen. Cause that just wouldn't feel right to me. Like right. I, I feel like I'm not performing 
to the level of of, of my potential. Exactly. Yeah. So you're you, you're you're individual agent. Yep. And your first year you close uh, at Keller Williams. My first yes. year I did fifty three units. Okay. So I joined Keller like essentially right after the new year. My, my anniversary date was in December. Oh, okay. And, and so it wasn't until October of my first year at KW that I made my first hire. Um, but they didn't, you know, I didn't see any of what they were doing until the following year. So we, right. did, we did 53 units uh, mm-hmm. the first year at KW. Um, it, it was the most exciting and worst year of my life at the same time because I had, you know, no leverage. Right. And I was like literally like passing out on my laptop at like 2 or 3 a.m. like every, every night. We right. were excited. We were making great money, um, but there was no quality of life there. And I'm like, something has to change. And right. So that's uh, when I started to explore, you know, this idea of leverage that, you know, the Keller Williams model was, was preaching so much. And um, ar- around that time is in October is when I hired my first buyer's agent and also started the process of getting my wife licensed, um, who, who now works with us as well. Got it. Okay. Yep. So your first hire was a buyer's agent? It was. Yes. Okay. So um, interesting decision, I know. So uh, I was actually at Keller Williams for a year and I didn't read the real estate Bible, uh, the millionaire real estate agent. And, you know, being a sales minded guy, yeah. um, I was focused, right. I was focused on sales and I'm like, right. how do we, how do we sell more? How do we, you know, service, service more people. Right. And, um, I was also at a point where I was in a listing specialist role from the previous team right? and, you know, quickly discovered that I didn't enjoy working with buyers as much as I did working with sellers, right? right? So I leveraged that that piece out, uh, got my wife licensed, and um, my wife came in probably three or four months after the buyer's agent and started taking over some administrative duties for our team, and we started building systems. Kind of good timing, right? So they say this is a 90-day business, so some of the stuff that that buyer's agent was doing... She came in almost right on time. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we brought the buyer's agent in uh, with the idea and goal of like selling more houses and it, and it worked. And then I quickly realized that I didn't have the systems to service the clients um, the way that um, I expect to. Right. Um, at least documented anyways. Right. And so it just made my world a freaking mess. Like right. I was laying in bed at night, like did this get done? Did that get done? Yep. And uh, then I got around some experienced KW people and they're like, yeah, you're an idiot because you <laughs> hired a buyer's agent before an administrative person, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so we had to get that sorted out, but that was yeah. definitely an exciting, but yet yeah, stressful few months because I didn't have the infrastructure with the systems and man, like I'm, I'm, I'm OCD, I'm ADD, I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> And I care a lot about, you know, my reputation and the level of service that we give to our clients. And so when those balls were dropping around me, it was just really eating away at me as a person. Um, And uh, so we had to, we had to nip that in the bud. Yeah. Um, So so curious, what, how did you hire the buyer's agent? Yeah. Um, I mean, like what, what, were you looking for qualities? Was that a desperate, desperate, you were in a, just a desperate moment or, you know, really it, it I was approached by them. Um, so oh, cool. yeah, no, I was having some success in the office as an independent agent and, you know, Keller's preaching, preaching the team model and, uh, s- uh, several people actually approached me about, you know, joining what I was doing and, you know, they didn't know exactly what that looked like, but I sure did. And that was yeah. getting buyers off my plate as, as quickly, as quickly yeah. as possible. Right. So, um, I didn't really go through like a formal hiring or interview sure. process. It was just a cup of coffee and like, you know, you seem like a cool person. Let's, yeah. let's do this. Got it. And, uh, I, I lucked out with my first hire. She yeah. was an incredible buyer's agent and, uh, you know, just, did awesome um, yeah. for, for us. Um, yeah. And I think that's, that's, that's also important because, you know, for a lot of people who are a lot of agents who are creating that type of, the, that type of business yeah. and they need that leverage, um, they don't necessarily go through the right hiring process, sure. right? They're just like, you feel good in my world and, and come on board. And I want, I want listeners to hear that and know that, I mean, it's, I'm not saying it's okay, yeah. but you do see it. Right. And, and sometimes it works out. So yeah, with that, with that first hire, like, Admittedly, it was it was more luck than more luck than anything. Yeah, I had no clue what I was doing. I had no idea about leadership. I had no idea about hiring. Yeah, you know, I was doing a half-ass job of managing myself, and now I'm expected to go and lead and manage other people. Yeah, the growth curve was was humongous, and um, you know, that's probably where I've experienced the biggest pain points and biggest growth in my business is with the leadership aspects 
of articulating what's in my head to other people that may or may not be wired the same way that I am. Right. And then just figuring out, you know, the hiring piece of it and like what to look for. Yeah. And now like I'll get in front of talent. I'm like, I can see it in your eyes. Yeah. Right. I can hear it by the mm. way that you, the words that you use and your body language and the way that you talk. Right. Right. And where you like to spend your free time. And, um, you know, that all came from wisdom from making poor hires. Right. right. And, and seeing what, what talent does does not look like. Right. Now I have a very clear picture of what talent looks like and um, am, am blessed with an incredible team right now of extremely positive, hardworking people that embody our core values. Right. Okay, great. So you'll see more often than not, not all the time, that yep. there's a high D that's going to run that and for the DISC assessment for sure. everybody who's wondering, is going to run the team. And a lot of them do struggle with how do I have that conversation with uh someone who's a high I or S or C. Sure. So how did you navigate that? Right. Because you were just learning. Yeah. I, really just, just through coaching and, and through my network. Um, yeah. And, you know, like probably complaining, you know, to, to a degree to, right. to coaches and, right. and other leader, you know, leaders that I had in my life. And, I'll never forget my, my coach came to me and I think he was a little frustrated by my like continuous, like complaining about the same problem. Right. And he's like, I need you to get something through your head. The people on your team are not like you. And I, th I think, um, we all have a tendency to, to view the world through, through our own lenses, but everybody views the world differently. Yeah. Right. And, um, it's, it's understanding that and recognizing that and just turning down the high D a little bit and taking time to get to know, you know, who's in front of you, you know, what's important to them, what motivates them. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not what I want for your life. It's what you want for your life and how can we help you get there? Right. It was probably the biggest, you know, breakthrough I had in, in that arena. Right. Mm -hmm. So what do you tell that, that person who says, you know what? No. No, this is who I am. I'm not going to change who I am. And a matter of fact, my clients love me for me. And there's no way I'm going to ever bring leverage into my world or a buyer's agent or an admin because I am the person that gives the best service to my clients. Yeah, I mean, the first the first thing that jumps to mind to me is is that, okay, great, you have a job and you don't have a business, right? And yeah. so agents that don't want to scale, don't want to grow, don't want to leverage, there's nothing wrong with that so long as that you're happy with it. Right. And what I've learned is, is that point. I, I love real estate. I love servicing our buyer and seller clients. Um, but I'm more of a business person th than I am a real estate agent. And what satisfies me most at this stage in my business is, you know, helping our agents hit their goals, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit more control over your environment because I'm hand selecting these people, right? And right. I'm spending more time with these people than I am with my family versus, uh, and so it's just a little bit more of a controlled environment where I get to pour in and develop people that I actually love and care about versus, right. you know, random Joe Blow that called me off of Google. Uh, chances are in the world that we live in, they might be crazy. Yeah. And, 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 and so, you know, <clears throat> I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm ready for more of a transition into a leadership role right. uh, within the team and I'm hoping that uh, somebody rises up and can, you know, take over the listings for me yes. so that I can really focus on um, recruiting, talent acquisition, and developing uh, the talent that we do have on our team. That's huge. And yeah. I talk to a lot of the, the team leads that I work with, yeah. and, and we talk about you never really get out of a lead generation model yeah. ever. It's just, right? it's just lead generating for talent, talent versus buyers and sellers. Exactly. And and that's where my where my passion lies at, at the present moment. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you see like Gary Keller. That's his jam. He yep. is looking for talent, and he's sure. working a lot on the business as well. Sure. But he's putting the right people through leverage. In the right spots yep. to execute that vision, right? It, 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 it's everything, right? Having having worked with talent and having worked with non-talent, it, it's it's a game changer. Like, and I think one of the easiest ways to to identify whether the people in your environment are talent or not is after you're done having a conversation with them. How, how do you feel? Right? Do you feel energized and excited and amped up? Or do you feel like you need a drink and, and like you want to let out a big sigh and like go right. take a nap? Right. right. And, True. and you know, po positive people will, will lift you up and yeah. negative people will, will, will bring you down. And I think it all has to do with, with energy. Right. Right. Um, and so, um, and that energy doesn't go away, right? At a compound. It, yes. Both ways. So a super energy person will compound not only through you, feed but off, through your whole team. You feed off of each other. Yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine the negative? 
energy compounding and weighing and, and, and heavier and heavier and heavier? I've actually, I've actually been there. Uh, I've actually been there in my real estate career and it's, it's crippling and it's very frustrating and it feels out of alignment. And yeah. six years in, you know, we're just now, you know, getting our core values out onto paper. We're just mm-hmm. now, you know, using those as a filtering mechanism for who we get into business with and who we stay in the business mm-hmm. with. Huge. And, you know, I'm, I'm more serious about that than anything. Because um, as a person that is as hard charging and cares as much as I do, like the environment is is truly everything. And yeah. if I found that if I don't have the right environment to come to, that I'm not fulfilled and I'm not satisfied, and it and it, and it truly does impact my physiology outside of the workspace. Yep. Like I take that oh, yeah. home with me nights. I take that home with me weekends. My wife can pick up on it. You know, it impacts my relationship with my kids and. That's, that's exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing. So I just, I've made a decision that I can't compromise on that anymore, even if it means taking a half step backwards because we've got to fire, you know, uh, uh, get out of business with, with a, with a high producing agent because they're not in alignment with us. I'll make that decision because it's that important to my well-being, physiology, so and, and my beliefs in business. Yeah. And, and, and I'll talk to some people and it's, 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 in essence, you're taking one step back to take two steps forward, mm. right? And and what did you just do for the team when you have that fierce conversation with that agent and they leave the team, right? They have other opportunities sure. outside the team. What did that just do for your whole team? Like the people that you're leading, yeah. they know now that you have their best interest at heart sure. and the team and the culture, right? But if you allow that that person to stay in and kind of infiltrate and, and, and build a disease, yep. You think talent's just going to hang around that and love in it and bathe in it? It's a can- it's a cancer for for the locker room, right? Right, mm-hmm. and you know if you're going to have if you're going to have a top performing team that goes out and wins in the marketplace year after year, I look at success in business no different than success in sports. Right, it's yeah. who, whoever's got the best coach on the sidelines and the best players on the field is go- is going to win the game, yeah. right? And, and that comes down to to culture. It comes down to your core values and philosophy about life and business. And, um, you know, if you're able to build that culture and not only attract those people, but keep them, you could be a dynasty in the business world, yeah. right? Uh, you could be the New England Patriots as much as I hate them. Uh, you <laughs> could be a cowboy. Yeah, yeah, you could be, uh, you could be the New England Patriots right. of the real estate world if you, if you figure this out and learn how to attract that talent. And, and keep them on your keep them on your team. You're you're gonna you're gonna win a lot in business and in life. So how do you do that? Yeah, how do you do that? I think it's just getting a, a crystal clear picture on on what you want it what you want it to look like. And I think that's different for everybody. Yeah. Right? I think it's, right. it's spending a lot of time in reflection and figuring out what's truly important to you as the leader. And then just focusing on that and really using that as a filtering mechanism to make all your decisions in your business across the board, right? And um, I think that once you identify those and once you start to focus on them, that uh, like-minded people start to show up start to show up in your world. That's exactly right. right. I mean, I've got, I've had people like without real estate license that just like follow me on Facebook and like, Hey, I really like what you're posting. Like, you know, I think that you and I have similar views of the world. Right. You know, I'd like to have, you know, a talk with you about like what it would look like to get my real estate license and have a career in real estate. Yeah. And, and those people are like naturally attracted to me, but it wasn't until like I focused on that. Yeah. Right. And, and now they're, Man, we used to work hard to recruit, and and now like our best recruits are are coming to us, right? And like they're seek they're seeking us out versus us having to seek them out, and um, you know that's that's an exciting spot to be in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys have created that energy, right? Yeah. So there's and so if you could just do this for me because sure. I have a few of these clients who don't listen. Uh, so what would it look like if you didn't? tell your story on social media, if you didn't tell about your wins, if you didn't do that cool thing with guess the price, right? Like if you didn't do those things, how, how much harder would it be for you to attract talent if you weren't telling your story? Yeah. I mean, it, it would be, it would be nearly impossible. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You heard it. Yeah. It, 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 would, <laughs> it would be near, nearly impossible. Right. I mean, we've all got, you know, friends on our Facebook that they, they, they just sent us a friend request and like, yeah, they look like an interesting person and we've got 80 mutual friends. So 
I'll just add them, but we don't know who they are. I mean, right. I've got two guys on my team right now that fit that exact description. And like, you know, God put us together for a reason. Yeah. Like they're good, hardworking people with a positive mindset that are learning based yep. with a great attitude. And that's, yeah. that's exactly what, what I'm looking for. Right. Yeah. I can look past skill for somebody that has a great mindset and is learning based and, um, you know, come, comes to work with ready to work. Right. Yeah. Like I can, I can, I can work with you. Exactly. Right. And, you know, a person that's extremely skilled, but doesn't have a good mindset, like there's going to be friction. We are yeah. not going to be in alignment and I'm not going to be, you know, having momentum in, in my life. You know, when, when there's, when there's, when you're out of alignment with the people that you're in business in, it's a strain and yeah. you focus on that. And when you're focused on that, you're not focused on your goals yeah. and you're not going to give your best version of yourself to your family, your business or your team yeah. when, when that's the case. And um, so it's it's absolutely mission critical to the health of of, of your business and, and yourself. Hashtag mission critical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Where energy goes, energy flows. Right? That's right. And you're right. And if you do have that 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 bad seed that's and your energy is going there, you start to lose focus of the goal. Absolutely. Yeah, I yep. agree. I agree. So. Yeah, that's me. I keep. I, I think I'm leaning on it, and I'm making it go. Oh yeah, yeah. Back and forth. So I apologize. Yeah. I gotta, Hopefully I gotta you can ed edit that out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I gotta find it and then edit it out. Yeah. So you are at the. You you built the business. You have the buyer's agent. Now you have the admin. What was your next hire and why? Yeah, we continued to build out. Um, you know the buyer agent department. So um, to me, uh, I could make a lot of sense out of bringing people in and. Um, teaching them how to work uh, buyer leads, right? right? And so that was something uh, that I started off as with a young agent is like really focusing on like those scripts on how to move the random internet buyer lead forward or the right. random sign call forward. So my belief at the time was that, hey, look, if I just bring these people in, I can tell them what to do and I can tell them what to say and they'll be successful. And um, that worked to a certain degree. Yeah. Um, uh, but we also had some, some failures and bumps in the road al sure. along the way, right? It, 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 it's That's just not the way it works. Right. You know, you truly have to have, um, you know, talented people with similar views of the world and, and similar views of business if ultimately you're going to make that thing fire on all, on all engines. Yeah. And um, so... We continued to do that, but we 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 struggled, um, yeah. and and so the business continued to grow, but I, I wasn't feeling like it was growing to the degree that it could have. Right. And man, uh, one of the biggest headaches that I've ever had in my business is to try to have this like internet lead gen based model where we're generating a bunch mm. of buyer leads and expecting uh, my buyers agents to be the ones to successfully navigate those. Right. And, uh, you know, my coach who I've, I've been with now for three years, amazing, uh, Craig Zuber. Um, he, what up, Craig? Yeah. <laughs> he, um, he's, he said, man, we got to quit talking about this. He's like, here's the deal. He's like, you're trying to grow this big machine, this big engine, right? Think of it like an assembly line, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got one person working two different pieces of the assembly line and the assembly line's breaking down and you're the owner of the plant and you're pissed off about it. Yeah. What you really need to do is hire another person to work that one piece of the assembly line right. instead of having one uh, one person work two different stations of it. Right. And, um, you know, that's the time uh, that I crossed paths with David, my ISA, and... Uh, he just he's, he completely solved that problem for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. He completely solved that problem for me. Behaviorally speaking, you know, he was you know suited for that job, but also just the fact that that's his one thing. He, yeah, he owns that, right? Right. Uh, where attention goes, energy flows, right? Mm -hmm. Like he was the guy that was in the office that was behind the computer with the headset on, and that was his job description. And he was one behaviorally suited for it, but two also accountable for it, and. Um, to expect buyers agents that are out in the field yeah. that are supposed to be going on appointments, yep. writing contracts, negotiating contracts, negotiating repairs to to do manage you know hundreds of internet leads a month, yeah. um, it was just something that we fell flat on our face with, and I carried a lot of frustration around because I'm like, ah, oh, I'm investing in these opportunities, but they're not treating them seriously, right. and uh, you know they just weren't behaviorally suited for that. Exactly, know? and so. 
Um, fixing that, you know, has allowed for explosive growth uh, in the buyer side of our business. Right. Because he's focused on inbound uh, internet inquiries. Right. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And uh, just to, you know, I've, so ISA and OSA. Sorry. Yep. So one of the things I've heard that it's a really cool word or a title change that you could use for that is a, a high ticket closer. Okay. It's a high ticket closer. For some people, they, they've heard ISA and OSA and telemarketer or whatever sure. for so long that the, it just got a bad taste. Yep. It's like you're a high ticket closer. I like that. Anyways, that, that was one thing I picked up on uh, uh, talking to someone else. And I was like, you know what, that, that'd be the next thing that I put in. Just a, just a, a small shift in words. Yeah, and mindset, right? And mindset, yeah. right. I mean, because truly, are you a high ticket closer? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Huge high yeah. ticket closer, right? Yeah, Hundreds set, of thousands of dollars. Sure. I mean. It's setting the stage for that mindset too. And, exactly. and uh, as, as much as we'd like to think that it's not, title is, is, is a big deal to people. People wear that like a badge of honor. Exactly. And, and I, set, exactly I right. think that sets the tone for the role. So appreciate right. you sharing that with me. Absolutely. You. Absolutely. So that is one of the breakdowns that you see besides hiring. One of the most frequent breakdowns you see is, is exactly what you just said. To where the, buy, the the team leader gets frustrated because of the leads that aren't being closed on the buyer side. Sure. Um, and that's huge. And, and that's why I said from the very beginning, I wanted to get a little bit more of that conversation as well on here is the ISA, OSA role. Sure. And for anybody listening that might not know what that is, could you break that down real quick before we go into it? Yeah, sure. So our ISA is the front man for all leads that flow into the business. So uh, we generate leads from you know various different sources. Uh, we're heavily invested in internet lead generation, so we play the you know Google pay per click game. Um, uh, I'm thankful that uh, as of last week, my Zillow spend is the lowest that it's been in, in four years. Slowly we, trickling out of that. Yeah, we, we used to spend like close to $3,000 a month on Zillow. Yeah. And, and now I'm at $350 and, and I feel I feel great about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, we generate leads from there. A lot of sign calls with the amount of, of listings that we take. Nice. We do a lot of uh, Facebook target marketing and stuff in Facebook Marketplace. Perfect. And all those leads just naturally flow into our database. Yes. The ISA is on duty you know, Monday through Friday business hours. He sees those pop up, you know, has great, you know, less than five minutes response time. And, you know, he's working to find timeline motivation and demonstrate the team's to team's value to these random strangers that, right. you know, don't know us, don't like us, and don't trust us yeah. at this point in time. Um, so he, um, he he's done an incredible job with that. Yeah. You know, it takes a really special person to come in and do that role and understand the percentages and say, look, Here's 100 people, uh, 95 of them are going to tell me to buzz off, right? right. And, and possibly be nasty to me. Actually, definitely will be nasty <laughs> to, 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 to me uh, <laughs> yeah. a set percentage of the time. Yeah. But it's finding somebody that um, you know knows that in that 100, there's going to be five, and they can continue to power through those those no's and turn that, and turn that into a model. And so that's when... Right. Not only did we bring the ISA in, but we also changed, you know, the entire structure of how we handled the buyer side of the business. So um, and up until we had the ISA and even shortly after, uh, you know, we were still running out and like meeting people at the house and showing them homes without agent mm-hmm. representation, yeah. without bring, being pre-qualified. And um, again, my coach, you know, was really applying some pressure to, to bring that in-house. And yeah. so... Currently, I would say 90% of the buyers that we meet with are in-office buyer consultations that are signing agency with us and have at least like started a conversation yeah. uh, with, a, with a lender. And um, from an efficiency standpoint and just not wasting your time with tire kickers or people mm-hmm. that hey, you know, have an agent but they're at the beach and they pretend like they don't just so they can get in uh, and see the house, yeah. I mean – that's deflating, right? Yes. And yeah. um, and so you know, having that for for our agents has really you know sharpened up their funnel and made them uh, way more efficient. Yeah. So that they're you know not wasting time, not wasting gas, but more importantly, you know, not coming away from appointments feeling deflated because exactly, they yeah. should have never been there yeah. to, to begin with. Yeah. And, and so um, that's really when our buyer business took off is yeah. the combination of in house ISA, but also transitioning into the in-office buyer consultation, right. we've experienced some tremendous growth. And I have no doubt in my mind that that is absolutely the model to follow yep. uh, if you want to build a great, high-powered, high-energy, efficient team. Exactly. Yep. That's awesome. So uh, 
Oh man, where's I gotta go with that? You just said like three great points I really wanted to jump on. Um, oh yeah, so so not only are they saying they're not they're not only saying no to the people like you said that are tire kickers, right? The people who want to look at homes. They're saying yes to the people who truly need them now. Yes. Like they need they need your help. And for you to spend all that time with someone who doesn't need your help and just wants to kick around and just look at great countertops. Yep. Right? You're you're missing out on everyone who truly truly needs your help. There's right? a lot there's there's a lot of that out there. Yeah. I mean, real estate, you know, is sexy. People yep. love it. That's why there's 20 different television That's shows why we're here. about we're sexy. you know, you're right. <laughs> fix, fix this, flip that, right? Yeah. Like it's a hot topic. People yeah. will look at real estate that have zero intentions of buying it or zero ability to buy it. Right. And they will absolutely uh, absolutely waste your time, yep. right? And yep. everything is energy. And so just being hyper aware of are the things that you're doing and your systems built around keeping your energy in a high state, right? Yeah. Or are there things that, you know, are bringing you down? And you know, same thing with like me on the listing side of the business. I'm prospecting based. I call for sale by owners. I call expireds. I circle dial. I do all that. And um, I think at least in the early stages for me is that you get so excited about the fact that you set the appointment that like you don't want to pre-qualify them because they're like, there might be a chance that they, <laughs> yeah. they work with me. Yeah. Again, another thing that my coach, you know, beat me over the head with for seems like a couple of years is mm-hmm. we pre-qualify every single appointment. Yeah. I'll tell you last year, my, my listing business grew by, by 30%. And I went on a third of the appointments that I did the previous Boom. year, and my quality of life was like 10x better, yeah. right? Like because I wasn't wasting my time, yeah. right? You know, when you're probably very time conscious as well, right? Like if you're if you're wasting your time, there's there's no more defeating uh, feeling to to an entrepreneur that mm-hmm. understands you know what their time is worth and what yep. their dollar per hour needs to be in order for them to hit their goals, and like. You know, I would ask the hard pointed questions. And if I didn't like the answer, I'm canceling the appointment. Right. Or I'm referring it out to one of my competitors. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, you should call, you know. <laughs> right. Perfect. And, and um, you know, I hate that it, it took me as long as it did to learn that lesson because I've experienced, you know, the the the, yeah. the quality of life really uh, and the higher state of energy that that comes with like truly going on yeah. qualified appointments yeah. that hey if I come out to the house today and everything I say makes perfect sense to you and you feel one hundred percent comfortable and confident that I can sell your home would you be prepared to get the process started with us today yeah and if their answer to that is no. I keep going with my pre-qualification script yeah. and then I revisit that yeah. before I get off the phone, right? right? Like, hey, earlier you'd mentioned that if I come out today and you said yeah. you said no, yeah. tell me more about that, right? Right, And that's where the magic comes out, right? Yep. And, um, you know, sometimes based on their response, you know, I'll cancel the appointment and sometimes I'll go on it. Like, yeah. hey, I promised these two other agents that I'm going to meet with them as well and I'm not going to make a decision before that, right? right? I'm going to still go on that appointment and try to get them to make a decision before they meet with those agents. (laughs) Sometimes it works, other times it doesn't. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And and I'll say that you probably appreciate your time a lot more for, because, or because you went through that hell of just constantly going through appointments and not really committing to the process, right? Yeah. Now you appreciate this so much more and you appreciate the time that you get back, right? Because you actually went through the crap. Yeah, you know what I mean. Absolutely, it's it's really just about uh, protecting protecting your mindset yeah. and protecting your energy. Yeah, and I don't I don't care who you are. If it's if it's ninety five degrees and ninety eight percent humidity, yeah. in North Carolina summer, and you're throwing on a suit to go out to an appointment that's forty five minutes each way, yeah, and then you get there and you know they're like have no intentions of yeah. listing their house. No bueno. You know you, yeah. you can't help but to go to a bad spot. Yeah, right. right. And um, so it's just impacted my energy, my physiology, my 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 health. Yeah, like like really everything. Yeah, um, it's. It's been incredible. Yeah. And, and, it, and I'm glad that it changed because it, it needed to change. Yeah. Right? Like, you can't be the best version of yourself when you're, like, upset and pissed off and feeling you know deflated. crazy? I mean, we're we're, ta- we're having a business conversation, but yeah. I'll say that 90% of our conversation has been about mindset and energy. Yeah. And talent. Yes. To protect your mindset and energy. Yes. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that funny? So, um, not really funny. I guess we see this a lot, right? Yeah. I but mean, Gary, is- Gary, Gary says that, uh, you know... Once you once you figured out how to sell six million dollars in real estate, he said, if, if you're not a millionaire, it's because you suck at hiring. Yeah, right. It's like there's only so much skill 
needed to, to go out there and service a buyer mm-hmm. or a seller. Exactly. From there, it becomes about team building. It comes about leverage, and it comes about the players players on the field. Yeah. And um, yeah. You know, th- that by far has been my biggest growth opportunity and, yeah. and pain point in this in this journey. And and I wouldn't trade it for for anything. You know, one of the things that we've systemized in the businesses that I'm working with is yeah. talent search because yeah. it's a numbers game. Um, so everyone has to have these talent searches a uh, certain number a month. And uh, 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 dang it. Oh, it was so good. It yes. was right there on the cusp. Um, we do that. Dang it. It's gonna, it just left me. Talent it search. System- me. Talent search. Systematizing. Yes. Yes. Shot. It's yeah. gone. It'll come back. Okay. It'll come back. But I do want to jump back to the ISA just real, real quick. Yeah. So what, what's the what's the uh, uh, the assessment for the disc? Well, what are you looking at for that? Because the, one of the reasons the buyer's agents get beat down is because of the high eye. Yes. Right? And they're, they want to be liked. And so it does deflate them. Yep. So what are you looking for in an ISA, OSA type of personality? Sure. I, th- I think there needs to be a certain element of sociability there. But yeah. I think if it's the leading trait that you may you may struggle with having a high performing ISA. Right. For the simple fact that um, most high eyes would prefer like face-to-face communication. And so mm-hmm. to put them, you know, in an environment where they're in an office, exactly. in a desk, kind of isolated and yeah. having conversations with people on the phone, um, you know, probably find a, experience a lot of burnout in that role. Yep. I, I'm blessed to have had one ISA and only one ISA and we've kept him. You know, we've tried to make that second hire a few times yeah. and we failed miserably. But I, I just lucked out with my first guy. Yeah. You know, now that I've had a chance to, to reflect on it, I, I think that... Um, his his SC, you SC? know, yeah, at SC. So the S, you know, is, is going to be very into the routines and not like a lot of, of change right. and be more of in a controlled environment, right? Yeah. And so um, in S, you know, the idea of having, uh, you know, very inconsistent, 100% commission-based income uh, might be terrifying. Right, and exactly. And to, to have to, like have very inconsistent schedule where you're working nights and weekends and buyers or sellers pulling you around as yeah. they, as they need be that, that they would, they wouldn't do that for any amount of money. So exactly. I, th- I think the S is important. And also, you know, my ISA does more than just make phone calls. Yeah. He's really like a department head. We just don't have the employees to officially give him that title yet. Right. Yeah, yeah. So he does a lot of like systems based stuff for me, whether it's, building out drip campaigns or figuring out what our labeling and filtering process right. looks like for the database, you know, uh, ironing out all the details of like bringing the buyer consultation in house and how yeah. those appointments are communicated, yeah. conversion rates, set to held ratios, return on investment for lead sources, all, all of those things. Yeah. He's, he's killing all that. So he's not like your textbook ISA. Yeah. He's really like a, a lead gen department head right. that happens to still be making phone calls and also carrying that other job description. Right. So he's hiring for me as well too, reviewing resumes, conducting interviews for the first layer. And then I get involved after that. But uh, I really appreciate, you know, his, um, his skill set with the systems, right? Um, I think are, are critical in that role because yeah. it's it's very system heavy if you're going to get that up and running at a high level, right? Yeah. No, I love that. I love that. Actually, I was working with a <coughs> SC in the productivity coaching world. Yeah, coached them out of the program because they weren't enjoying the sales part. Yeah, they joined a team. Became the ISA and crushed it. Broke yeah, all, broke all time records in that role. Yeah, I think I think for the for the the ISA, which is like the inbound person yeah. that that SC does yeah. really well. They're yeah. warm, they're comforting, right? They're steady, consistent, and they're methodical, mm-hmm. right? Because a lot of these people you're having to follow up with for six to 12 months right. or, or more. Yeah. If you don't have systems in place, you're going to fall flat on your face, yep. right? Now, switch gears and go over to, to the the outbound sales agent. I think you need somebody with a, a little bit <gasps> more aggressive. <gasps> yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, I think... Um, uh, although I haven't perfected that higher yet, yeah. in my mind, what that looks like is like a, a CD, right? Yeah. So somebody that's like very systems based and methodical, mm-hmm. but also has you know that that ump to them where you know they're going to be able to go out there and face that rejection and move you know from one prospect to the next without yeah. loss of enthusiasm, right? Because you know you. Uh, my picture of it is you need to be a little bit more aggressive. Oh yeah, you know, calling on for sale by owners and expires than you do 
opt-in internet leads, exactly. it's a little bit easier and more friendly of a phone call to make. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So for you guys, where are you currently at this year? Yeah, so this year um, we are at 20 million. May. May 2019. Yeah, yeah, we're at we're at uh, 20 million uh, paid and pending um, awesome. for the year, and I want to say we're hovering. Man, we have 30 closed and approaching 30 pending, so about 60 about 60 units uh, awesome. into the year, and yeah. uh, we're you know a lot of new hires. I mean, three of the 10 people on the team uh, have been here less than 60 days. Right. And, and so we're just now wow. starting to see the benefits of their pipeline, you know, playing out right. and across the board, you know, the entire team is catching some momentum, Yeah. Uh, mainly in part due to the learning curve, but also we're at the peak right. of the spring market right now. And yeah. um, this year, for whatever reason, seemed to be a little bit uh, of a slower start in years past. Yeah. Uh, but I'm fully expecting uh, growth this year yeah. in, in our business. So that's awesome. And yep. so now I'll tag on to what I was saying about the talent. Yeah, sure. Um, because we're talking about talent. I knew it'd come back to you. Yeah, it yeah. Bing, went right back. <laughs> so the reason, one of the reasons why we scale it too is because obviously we've heard it a ton and we're thinking that, and you stay off this table, is that there's a shift coming, right? Yeah. There's a shift. We don't know how bad, but there's a shift coming. Sure. Now, we know what to do during a shift. Yes. And one of the best things that you can have in your arsenal it's having talent, right? Talent will make it through a shift no matter what. Absolutely. They'll do whatever it takes. Sure. And that's why there's high focus and scalability in the conversations we're having with talent. Sure. Ab- absolutely. Ta- talent is talent is everything. And while um, I've only been in, in business for six years, so I haven't experienced a shift yet. Right. right? Same. Um, I, you know, I got in in, 2000 in in 2013, right? But I've been around a lot of people who have been, uh, yeah. a lot of people in my network oh, and, 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 and key leaders. And, um, you know, their mindset about it has given me confidence that we're going to be just fine and mm-hmm. actually thrive in a shift. Uh, I mean, the numbers make sense to me. You know, you look at, at the bottom of the bottom uh, from the top of the top, you went to around 5 million annual home sales in the U.S., to 4 million annual home sales, a 20% reduction. Right. And I've been told that the realtor boards on a national level will decrease by 30 to 40% during yep. those downturns, right? Yep. And so somebody's got to absorb that extra market share from the person that's doing business with their brother, or sister, cousin, mm-hmm. friend that maybe isn't the best choice in the marketplace, exactly. but they feel obligated to use them. Yep. So I feel like the teams that are proven um, and top producers in the area are going to pick up that market share and yeah. come out the back end of it with a stronger, more profitable business. Right, exactly. And it goes right back to your mindset. When there's an obstacle, there's an opportunity, right? Absolutely. It's for the obstacle for everyone else. It fires, is the fire in your belly, right? Because it becomes opportunity for you to take more market share. Yeah, you know, I've, I've been told that it, it everybody has the oh shit moment for about six months mm-hmm. until they're like, you know, the, oh, it's just a little, you know, blip in the market until they realize, no, this is actually yeah, a shift. Still going and then they way. freak out. And, you know, if they're selling six houses a year and they go to two and they need that for a living, they're probably going to have to punch out a real estate and right. go look at something else to do right. unless they figure out how to lead generate. Right. Yeah. So where are you guys? Where are you guys heading? What's what's the vision? What's what's the next step for for you guys? Sure, absolutely. You know, I mentioned earlier. I, I view myself now more as a as a business person that I do a lifetime realtor. Yeah. And um, so I'm really just excited about continuing to bring great people into our world and help them achieve their goals. So. Um, my, my main objective right now is to be able to punch out from production and really put a strong focus on dialing in our recruiting and hiring systems right. and then making sure that we have uh, proven systematized ways of getting agents into production as quickly as possible. Right. I've got my administrative team also currently working on you know, building an operations manual of all of our systems and processes across the board. Right. From new agent onboarding to hiring right. to lead generation. These are the scripts that we use to the email templates to contract to close and everything else in between. And um, with with the the end game being that we want to we want to expand our business into, into other markets. Yeah. Um, cool. For me, I can just make a lot of sense of that in my head where. I believe that every agent will find a point in their business where 
they start to experience diminishing returns on mm -hmm. their rate of growth in any given market because real estate's a relationship business. Right. And it's impossible to have relationships with everybody. Right. Right. There's always going to be that person that has to use their brother, sister, cousin, friend. Yeah. Right. And, and, and so I believe, you know, let's say uh, once our business gets up to 100 million, in my mind, it's going to be easier for our business to go from 100 to 120 million. Exactly and, the number I was thinking. Yeah, and, and do 10 in two other markets versus gain an additional 20 million in our market share. Yeah. And in every market, there's low hanging fruit, right? right. There's the expires, there's the, there's the FISBOs. Uh, I can run into another market overnight and set up a, you know, area specific website where I can send, you know, Facebook traffic to, or I can send Google traffic to. And while we're still selling in North Carolina, I can have my inside sales team and my outside sales team calling from right here across the hall in Raleigh right. into Wilmington, into Charlotte, into Greensboro, yep. wherever we want to go. Yep. And, and to me, that's just the biggest opportunity that there is right now yeah. for somebody that's business minded that wants to expand. Yeah. It, it, I just, it makes a lot of sense in my yeah. head, right? Now it just becomes about building out the systems and then mm -hmm. finding that one talented person that's going to work with your buyers and sellers in the market have our ISAs and OSAs, you know, um, shift their focus to that market or build out that team so that they can focus solely on that market. Yeah. We can run contract to close right across the yeah. hall from anywhere in North Carolina here. And uh, I would say that those two things being more of a focus on, on leader leadership and development of existing team members and then expansion of our business into a couple other markets. So right. my main goal is to take on the first two expansion sites myself yeah. so I can learn the ropes sure. so that I could then um, you know, come back and train that to a director of, of expansion and we'll take this thing wherever they want to go. Dude, so, dig it. Yeah, I don't see myself doing that long term with a family as young as they are. I've got three daughters under five years old and I envision that, you know, spending a lot of, you know, time on the road. And that's just not what right. I want for my life. I want to have a lot of consistency and structure um, so that work is work and family time is family time. And, you know, I don't have to, you know, uh, mix, blur the lines between those two. Say you're in two markets. Yeah. You go to three, you go to four and start to, the system makes this a lot easier. Yeah. What would be next for you? Yeah, um, I think I'll continue to look for for leadership opportunities um, and and uh, other businesses, right? So mm -hmm. um, we're actually uh, going to be rolling out like a education based um, business here shortly, nice. uh, where we're going to be doing um, like webinars, and seminars, um, and starting a, uh, starting a mastermind group. So um, that's a big area of passion. Now, ultimately, I'm looking to find a platform where I can help the largest number of people possible. Right. And um, you know, it's really just identifying you know what can we best help and serve people with finding that voice and then finding the audience to broadcast that to. Right. Um, because I believe we have a lot to bring to the marketplace. And yep. so and I think there's a lot of people in the world right now across multiple industries um, that that want not want that knowledge, yeah. right? Uh, and yep. not everybody can jump into real estate and do the $1,000 a month coaching mm -hmm. for lack of resources or for fear, right? They may yep. feel, feel more comfortable in like a group setting or may feel more comfortable in like a lower cost, like monthly mastermind type deal. And, yep. you know, I believe that um, o over time I'll be able to influence and help a lot of people with their goals. Yeah. I mean, that that's... That goes to the, if you look at it, the blue ocean strategy, right? Like, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's huge, right? There's a huge market out there for that. Yeah. I was listening to a podcast um, two weeks ago. It was with uh, Tony Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. And they said that... Oh, um, yeah. When they went live? Yeah. 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 They, they said that um, the, the self-knowledge business or self-education business where people are able to watch webinars and videos from the comfort of their own home... Three hundred and fifty million dollar business a day, yeah. And and, and Forbes is projecting that that's going to be a billion dollars a day within the next within the next five years. Yeah, and it makes perfect sense to me. I mean, does. like I've gotten more out of the the half day you know classes that I've been to at Keller Williams and, and beyond um, than I have in, in my entire college career for a yep. fraction of the cost. Yep. And those are like real life skills that I can, you know, use to like advance myself and my family and my business. Yep. And for, again, for a fraction of the cost. And I think that the traditional exactly. 
education system is 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 toast. Yeah, I, I really do. It's it's going to be more like specialization, finding your voice, 100%. finding your passion, and then like finding those people out there that are doing what you want to do, and you know, modeling their behavior and getting into that environment. So I was going to jump on that. And now I'm not. Yeah. Because you said it perfectly. Thank That's you. That's exactly right. That's yeah. the. Con- I was having a conversation with uh, uh, Jake Dixon about yeah. that, about what coaching is. Yeah. And, I mean, we look at it as the real estate world. And if you look at it at, in a mechanic world, if you look at it in a plumber's world. Yep. Right. If you look at it in these in the, in, in other industries that the, the colleges are like, come to us. You got to take these six classes before you can actually take it. Like, what? what am I going to take these? Six? Oh, for a degree. Sure. Oh, oh. When they're going to be so specialized with the mentor, the one who really killed it at the game, then they're going to go to that one person. Yep. They're going to pay them to teach them exactly what it takes with no fluff. Let's just get there. Sure. And it's all going to be in those coaching packages and products. 100%. Sure. It sounds like you listened to that same you know yep. webinar that, as I did. It's, it's uh, People are craving knowledge and yep. there are growth-minded people across all sectors, across the entire exactly. world. And it's never been easier to get in front of those people and find like-minded people that want to learn and yep. want, and want to grow and you know if you've demonstrated any level of success or or knowledge in a certain arena there are people out there that are willing to listen to you and willing to pay for that yep. just despite your limiting beliefs yep. and, you yeah and we were talking about the other day like uh, one of our new hires th- this guy like uh was like on tour, like opening up for this major band and like has like 200,000 streams a month on Spotify and Apple music. And I'm like, dude, once we get the real estate division of this open, like we could teach people like how to play guitar. We, we could Mm -hmm. teach people how to promote an event. Mm -hmm. We could teach people how to have a successful merchandise table at their event. Yeah. And you can find an audience for all of these things. Yeah. My buddy across the hall, David, he loves like growing cucumbers cucumbers and tomatoes and things like that. Why not put that on that video? <laughs> yep. Find that niche market, right? And this could be an extra business that we can work on, uh, you know, in our in our, our free time, right? Yep. Um, that it's it's just and exciting it's, spot to be in, and yeah. it's scalable. Yes, it's so much more. Matter of fact, when I was getting tapped out in coaching, I had fifty two clients. Yep, and I was like, I was like buckling at the knees a little bit, and. When I hired my, my, my new coach, yep. he was talking about this, the scalability of it. And, uh, and, and the, the, you're right, though, limited belief, because he's challenging me to put a premium on this price, right? Yep. And one, I'm like, I feel a little uncomfortable. Am I worth it? Yeah. Am I worth it? Yep. And he's like, well, tell me just, you know, great coaches, right? Sure. Questions, here we come. Sure. He's just like, tell me how much one commission is. And do you think that you can make them help or you can help them make one commission? Sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So tell me again why it's not worth it. Right. I was like, oh, so it's there's just, the, the people are out there, yeah, right? 100%. Whether it's the people that believe in themselves and yeah. even when they don't have the money are willing to invest in themselves because they know they're going to do what it takes in order to be successful yeah. or the trust fund baby, you know, yeah. that's got right. Right. A, big, a big bank account and they can stroke that check. Yeah. Again, we tend to view things through our own lenses, but 100%. everybody views the world differently. Everybody comes from different backgrounds and, and has different belief systems and financial standing. Like, there's billions of people on the world. Go out there and find your yep. tr- find your tribe. Yeah, because they're there, right? Yep. You just have to you just you just have to get started. Yep, yeah, exactly. And 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 if you keep discounting your price, those are the people that you're going to keep attracting. Absolutely, right? You have to break that ceiling and break that mold to move into that premium price to start attracting those type of people. Ab- ab- absolutely. Huh. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a few quick questions. Do you have time? Yes, just okay. a few more minutes. Yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. So then I'll just skip to. What profession other than your own would be fun to attempt? Ooh, what profession other than my own would be fun to attempt? Um, I would say at the at the present moment, you know, my my biggest passion, you know, outside of the the actual real estate yeah. sales team is, is this this uh, education, right? Um, like sharing, you know, my knowledge with the with the rest of the world and helping people grow that want to learn and grow, right? And there's nothing more exciting than that, than finding an attentive listener that can connect with your message right. and improve the quality of their life. Yes, it's great that you're able to make money from that, but it's the feeling that you get from doing work that is like making a positive impact on people's lives yeah. in the world yeah. is like super rewarding. Like I have chills right now, right? Yeah. So like I do pretty well with expired listings, right? So like I'm sure there's like, hungry agents across the world 
that would love, you know, to hear from somebody that's helped over a hundred of them in, in the last, in the yeah. last, in the last five years, right? Right. I, I believe that those people exist out there. I don't know the size of that audience yet, but I, I do believe that, you know, I could help, you know, those agents that are willing to learn have success in that arena, right? So I'm not going to go after the agent that wants to master open houses because that's not my thing, right. right? Like that's not what I will believe in, although it's, it's a very effective model for others, right? I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna share what I'm most excited about and what, exactly. what's most passionate about, uh, which is not open houses. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, out outside of that, um, you know. <laughs> I'm a foodie, so uh, my wife and I have definitely, uh, you know, talked about, you know, setting up a restaurant bar that oh, does, cool. like, specialty cocktails and, like, tapas menu, and, um, you know, we, we've been keeping, like, a recipe book of, like, stuff that we've cooked over the year. They were like, oh, my gosh, that would be so great in, in our restaurant one day, and, uh, you know. What would it be called? I have no idea. I have, I have no idea. Yeah. I have no idea yet. We haven't, we haven't arrived at, at a name yet, but I could just totally see myself... I, it, it's going to be a secondary business for me, right? But I could totally sure. see myself there, you know, working the crowd, building relationships with our repeat customers and, and um, you know, really building a sense of community out yeah. of that while de- delivering some awesome food and drinks, which yeah. is something that's uh, near and dear to my heart. Yeah. yeah. Name a sandwich after me? Yeah. <laughs> we'll have a, We'll have a Reuben. Yeah. You know, that goes without saying. Oh, man, yeah. I feel like giving you yeah. softball on that yeah. one. Um, all right. So uh, purchases are less than $100 that have most improved your life. Purchases less than $100 that have improved my life. Most improved your life. Um, I'm going to go with Headspace here. Um, the uh, meditation um, app. Oh, okay. Yeah. So... Um, Headspace is a is an app that you can get on cell phone device, and it, it's like they're like guided meditations. And um, you know, I think that uh, just most people don't have um, the correct well the correct start or finish to their day to set themselves up for optimal success. Agreed. And um, somebody said a great quote. They said, if you're, if you're too busy to, to meditate for five minutes a day, then you probably need to be meditating 20 minutes a day. Yeah. Right. And it, it's just really taking time to slow down and listen to your inner voice and set your intentions clear because an overwhelming majority of the population, they roll over and the first thing they reach for is their phone. Right. And there might be a text message waiting there. There are definitely several emails waiting there. They jump on Facebook and then their mind just starts racing in whatever direction that is. Yeah. And then your day gets away from you. And so I've learned to like keep my phone away from me in the morning. I have, um, you know, morning checklist. I have e- evening checklist. And it's really just about slowing down, identifying at your core what is most important to you, right? And what's going to make you most fulfilled in your life, right? Is it your personal fitness? Is it, you know, spending time with your family? Like, a lot of these realtors that are out there busting their butt, like they're doing it for their family. They're yeah, doing it for a good exactly. spot. Yeah. But but if you're if you're burning the candle at both ends so hard that you come back to your family like a, you know a hot mess and you're tired and stressed out and grumpy, like what is that really what, is that really what they want? Yeah. Do they want more money or do they want a better relationship and more time? Yeah. And um, so I just spend a lot of time in reflection, figuring out like, not what does the world want from me? What, 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 what does my family and friends, you know, think I should be doing, but like what leaves me most satisfied and fulfilled. Yeah. And like, I get that out on paper, right? Like I've got the seven areas of a balanced life right there. And those are my goals. And I just simply uh, list out the seven areas of a balanced life, identify on a quarterly basis what's most important to me in those areas. And then most importantly, I translate that onto my calendar and I do not compromise, right? right? If it... it, if it can't fit in around that stuff, I don't do it. Yeah. Right. And having that clarity has really just brought down my stress levels, made me a happier, like more fulfilled person. Yeah. Because you know it's easy to get caught up in the in the rat race. Yes. And uh, at the end of the day, everything I do is for my wife and my three beautiful daughters. And uh, you know if if. If, if, if I'm a great provider, but there's no relationship there and we don't, don't get to experience life together and have these incredible experiences, like I'm going to look back with regrets and, and yeah. I'm hell bent on making sure that that doesn't happen. And so 
while I'm hard charging when I'm on, I also, you know, make it a priority to like spend great quality time with my wife and kids, even though that means that the business may not be growing as fast as it could be right. if I were to work, you know, an extra 10 right. hours a week. And you remember why you did it. Yes. Right. Absolutely. You come back recharged and exactly. re-energized. It's counterintuitive for most people, right? They just go, 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 go until they burn out. Yeah. Um, I've done that. I've been yeah. that guy. And what I've learned is that from the point that you reach burnout, it's too late. It's already too far gone. Yeah. And it takes you three times longer to bounce back from yeah. burnout than if you were just to take care of yourself to begin with, exactly. right? So we have this like calendar. You can see I missed like the first four months of the year, but like, I've gone in here and like mapped out what the rest of my year looks like. And like, I'm going to the mountains, I'm going to the beach, I'm going yeah. to see Tony Robbins. You know, I'm not working on the birthday week of me and my wife in October, right? I'm going to spend oh, what's your birthday. What's 27. And then what else? Uh, 22nd for my wife. Oh, I'm 19th. Yeah. So we're going to like, you know, go on a little vacation, cool. you know, that week and, I've just learned that I have to get it out on paper like this year at a glance because I have a bad habit of like after the summer's over, I don't do anything fun until like springtime again. And you're like, you don't realize how long of a yeah. period that is. That's like five months. And in this business, you know, you're getting calls, you're getting yeah. texts. And you know, while you can try to build a bunker, you're still not, or at least I haven't, I'm not hundred percent insulated yet. Yes. Right. And, and so that's a great start. Though. Yeah. We, 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 we work hard, right. Yeah. We we work a lot of hours and we're, you know, available a lot, but that, that comes at a cost, right? Yeah. So making sure that you have strategic, you know, plans time off in advance to protect your mind and protect your body and make sure that you're putting focus on what truly is most important to you yeah. is, is, is absolutely important. I love that. I love that. Yeah. When I'm working with my clients, it's very, our first meeting, is just that. Yeah. Plugging in personal stuff they love to do. First, hobbies. Yeah. Yes. 100%. Because, and, and even, and people have heard a my day, why day? Just a day in the month that you just kind of just stop. Sure. And just, and you got to recharge because, man, one of the biggest things that I, I, when I stepped away from UPS was because I was seeing divorce. I was seeing depression. Sure. I was seeing like health issues. And it was like, it, when I knew I was going to get into real estate, I knew I would, those are some, those were, that was the reason I left. So that had to be something I protected in real estate and carrying it on to my clients. But really cool seeing it here. It just, it, to me, it means the world to me. I love that. It's, it, I love that. It, it's everything, man. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I've, I've experienced the the burnout. Several, and it's just not a good spot to be in. It's, exactly. it's like crippling when you get to that spot and you're not, while you think you're, you're, you're helping, you're not, right? Yeah. When, when you're coming back to your family at 60%, when you're coming back to your team at 60%, you're better just to recharge and come back at 90%, yes. right? And you're going to gain much more momentum, although you're you're working less hours. Agreed. Right? You're going to have more brain power, more great ideas and opportunities are going to pop into your head. You're going to be a better leader, husband, and father. Yep. And uh, that's, again, counterintuitive for most people. They think working more is going to produce more results, and uh, it's not the case. Well, I hope they listen to this podcast, yeah. right? Yeah. So two more things. Yes, sir. What, uh, where can they find you? Where can they find me? So uh, I'm most accessible on my Facebook, you know, news uh, feed. Uh, you can just early in the morning they can reach you. Yeah, yeah, Google. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jordan Clark. You're welcome to find me on Facebook uh, for our real estate business. You can find us at SellingRaleighRealEstate.com. My cell phone number nine one nine nine zero one fifty eighty. Very cool. It may take me a while to get back to you, but I I always respond and um, just look forward to helping anybody that feels like I can. Um, provide some value to them in their life. I love that. Yeah. So last question. Yes. What question do you have for everybody who's listening right now? Yeah, I would just say, uh, you know, what are the biggest problems that you're you're facing in your life and in your in your in your business right now? And and what would it take to, you know, help you help you move forward, right? Like one one of my favorite questions to ask is like people like go from screeching halts to like all in and and then they fall on their face, right? And I think it's important to like knock over that first domino, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that sets you up to get momentum and build a plan where you're going to ultimately be successful. So the question I'm always asking myself is what, what is one thing I need to start right now? And what is one thing I need to stop, right? And, and I keep that in front of me until I'm able to accomplish that objective. Right. And then when I do, I move on to the next thing because there's always the next thing. Right. Right. And it's just you know, never settling for where you're at and, you know, this constant desire for wanting to, gr to grow as a person, um, mm -hmm. you know, that, that keeps things, 
keep things moving along for me. Personally. Yeah, hence the Tony Robbins event that you're going to, right? That's right. You're going to walk on, Cole? Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is this your first one? It is. Awesome, man. Yeah, awesome. I've heard great things, so yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm pumped up. Yeah. And it's in Dallas where I was born, so I'll have a chance to connect with a, a lot of family. Yeah, I love that. I yeah. love that. Well, thank you so much. For yeah, man, too. This was great. Yeah. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Trust that you guys who are listening are not only going to listen, but you're actually going to put some of what you learned here into action. Thank you so much again. Yep. Until next time. Hey, thanks, Ruben. Of course.